Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service and it's the beginning of a very exciting week in the life of our churches in Sutton Parish. Whilst you're getting ready do go and get some bread which we'll share later in the service but we just wanted to tell you symbolically as we're here by the doors that this week the churches will be opening for private prayer. So as Louise breaks and enters or breaks and exits so to speak from here just to encourage you that our three churches will be open this week so on Monday St Michael's will be open from 10.30 till 12 in the morning St Nicholas will be open from 10.30 to 12 on Thursday and All Saints on Sunday from 10.30 to 12 again so let's pray as we begin our act of worship together Father God May you open our hearts and minds to receive from you. May we recognise your presence in our lives and thank you for the gift of your church, for the places and for our brothers and sisters as we come to worship together. And as we've symbolically opened these doors, Lord, may we open the community and the world to your light and love. Start with us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, Louise will be speaking into the theme of the disciples being sent out to do the mission of God, but a deep sense of inadequacy and concern about what might happen concern and care for the unknowns of the future, even as we open our churches this week, are something that we will be focusing and praying into. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray together. Almighty God, to, to whom all hearts, hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins to be our advocate in heaven and to bring us to eternal life. So let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Most, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be wondering why I'm standing by the font. Well, the font is the initiation place for our Christian journey where baptism takes place and is often actually in churches by the door. So again, it's this theme of new beginnings, opening up, journeying into the unknown but always with Jesus. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Matthew chapter 9, reading from verse 35. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and illness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them, because they were harassed and helpless, the sheep like sheep without a shepherd. 
Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. Jesus called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out impure spirits and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, who is also called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go out among the Gentiles, or enter any of the town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, proclaim the message. The kingdom of God has come near. Heal those who are ill. Raise the dead. Cleanse the, those who have leprosy. Drive out demons. Freely you have received. Freely give. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. It was absolutely wonderful to start this morning's service in St Nicholas Church by being inside and flinging open the door wide as Simon introduced our service. And now we're here at St Michael's and it's going to give me as much pleasure to hope open this door very wide behind me and go in. The people will at last be able to come into the churches again from Monday next week. That is very exciting and full of joy and wonder for me. Are you coming with me? Let's go into church. I wonder what it has meant for the community that our churches have been closed for the last few weeks. I, I wonder what they've thought about that and whether it's felt even to some people as though they wonder where God is if the, clo uh, if the churches are closed. Or it could well be that people still have seen the churches there in the community, many of them in St Helens with the big banner outside that says try praying. And maybe that's what people have been doing and they've seen the churches and they've held hope. I really like to think myself that the churches are a symbol of hope and that there is a light that shines out of them, the beauty of the presence of God in the midst of whatever people are experiencing and that he has been here for them all along and he is now and he goes with them into the future too. The churches maybe have held hope. I wonder what you think. Yesterday, a neighbour of ours came and he knocked on our door and he said to me, Louise, when are your churches opening? When is St Michael's opening where we're standing now? And I said, well, hopefully on Monday. He said, that's good. He's a neighbour who lives across the road and he doesn't usually come in here, but he does have quite a concern for the church and he, it has a place in his heart. And he said, I want to come and mend your gate for you before Monday so that it's ready for when the church opens. And that was a, a wonderful, generous gift from him, and a sign that he, this church really matters to him. Whether he comes or not, he has faith, and this church is a symbol of something good for him. So he's going to give that gift. He won't come in, but maybe he prays at home. Lots of people do. And you may be one of the praying people who you usually on a Sunday are in here. And you might find that you are able to come on Monday or on one of the other days when the churches of Sun are open. You'd be so welcome. These churches have missed you and we know that you've been missing them. However, there are people out there in the community who will not come into church because for them that is a, a step too far. Maybe they don't believe, maybe they struggle with understanding 
God and the things of God, maybe even at this particular time, perhaps more than ever, they are just not sure. Jesus, in the passage that we read today, he talked about looking upon the people with compassion because he saw them as like sheep, harassed sheep without a shepherd, and it moved his heart. And he went among them, loving them, healing them, and um, telling them of God's presence with them. And he also commissioned his disciples, his friends, who were not preachers, they had no particular, as they understood it, gifts of being able to share good news with anyone. But he said to them, I want you to go out into the villages and to tell people that the kingdom of God is near. And they did. And they, were, they came from backgrounds that didn't fit them for the purpose. They were fishermen, they were tax collectors, they were folk that were not learned, mostly. But they, they got that commission from Jesus and they went out and told people how much they were loved. And they took his healing power out into the streets. So where, where I am today is with thinking to encourage you. The church will be open. People can come in to pray. That's a fantastic thing. Do come if you're able to encourage others to. And also, there are people who will never do that. They need us to go to them. Mostly what they need is that we tell them what we know, that we have experienced the intimacy and the depth of the love of Jesus and we are able to tell them about that because of our personal experience. Lots of people have not had a hug for a very long time and this perhaps is the weekend for some where they can have a hug with somebody that they've um, loved and longed for, um, being, that, being able to be held by them. God longs to love and hold every person in this world. And his arms are outstretched with a holy hug today, welcoming people if they come to church, but longing to go to them where they are. And we'll be the ones perhaps that take him with us to meet the people where they are. I wonder what is possible for you to join in with in, in any of what I've said today. Please do.
On Pentecost Sunday, Pope Francis said these words and they are going to lead us in our prayers with a focus on hope. This is what he said. Today, our world is experiencing a tragic famine of hope. How much pain is all around us? How much emptiness? How much inconsolable grief? Let us then become messengers of the comfort bestowed by the Spirit. Let us radiate hope and the Lord will open new paths as we journey towards the future. Even as we seem to be dying in weakness, in fear, overwhelmed by all the forces against us, there are moments when we know that we will never be determined by any of that. We pray today for any who feel weak, fragile, vulnerable, and who need your courage, Father. There is a God who says to us, weep strongly, be strongly afraid, care strongly, choose life strongly in faith. And today we pray for anyone who is weeping, anyone who's grieving, anyone who's afraid, and we ask for your presence with them. There is a God who steps free of the binding chains around our souls, who calls us in a voice which always knows our name, who always feels our pain, who lifts our feet as though our life stands cupped in a saving hand and cherished forever in a life-filled place. We pray for everyone today who needs to know that their name is known to God and that he calls to them. He calls them by name. May they know themselves loved and may any of us who are called to share his love know his presence and his empowering. Finally, pour over us the oil of your anointing, we your people, that we may stand tall. Fill us with a fire which burns from the flame of truth, refining our being so that we may dare to take in our hands your cro cross of courage, justice, hope and love and plant it abroad in all the earth we ask this in the name of the one who walks this way before us to the end of time. We go forth in the miracle of the grace of God and may we be touched by the fire of the Spirit, the gentleness of Christ and the wisdom of our Maker. Amen. Wherever you find yourself as you listen to this service, we're going to share the peace together. So get yourselves ready. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Father, you made the world and you love your creation. You gave your son Jesus Christ to be our saviour. His dying and rising have set us free from sin and death. And so we gladly thank you. With saints and angels praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them, and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. So Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice, made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and the cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection, until he comes in glory. Christ has died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people and gather us in your loving arms and bring us with all the saints to feast at your table in heaven, through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation, and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him and that we, with the whole company of Christ, may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. We pray together. Father of all, we give, we give you thanks, thanks and praise 
that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, you declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope that you set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. So we've heard of the sending out of the disciples, and as we open up our church buildings for prayer, we are still called to witness, to love in acts and in prayer those around us. The peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and for his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.